On December 22, 1950, CP Air Flight 4 crashed into Okanagan Mountain on its way to Penticton. Oh, how did you end up on the flight? I was um, working in Victoria. I was going home for Christmas, and uh, this was, seemed the easiest way I'd ever flown before. You'd never uh, flown? No. This was your first flight? <laughs> yes. I enjoyed the excitement of it all. Yeah, to the crash, yeah. I hopped in a car with locals Ted and Randy, who took me up Okanagan Mountain. As we ascended, we got a good idea of the weather the pilot would have had to contend with. Now they do what they call instrument flight landings here. Visually, he can't see because of the fog and the rain. That's when everything all goes to hell in a handbasket. Treetops flew like grass. I thought, this is strange because we could feel the treetops being snipped off. The, like a giant lawnmower going through the woods. There's a theory that his altimeter may have been out. Had he even been 100 feet higher, he would have been fine. And then we saw the, the mountain ahead of us. You could see it? Yes. We were heading right towards it. And the pilot headed towards a big pine tree. And I guess this was something that they thought would stop us, and it hit. The cockpit was destroyed on impact, killing the pilot and severely injuring the co-pilot. However, the passengers fared much better. Did you get hurt? No, no, we were lucky. Oddly enough, no broken bones, lots of bumps and bruises and stuff like that. The people that had the seat belts on seemed to be, you know, hitting more than we did. You didn't have your seat belt on? No. <laughs> A nurse on board tended to the injured co-pilot. The stewardess took calm control of the group, who were contending with sub-zero temperatures. When we got out, we made a big bonfire and made our coffee there. Coffee? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Somebody put a blanket down. We sat down, and we disappeared in the three feet of snow. <laughs> and this was the first time he had any inkling of, of smiling, you know, but it did strike us funny. <laughs> When did the outside world find out that the plane had crashed? In those days, the policy was if an aircraft was overdue, that they had seven hours before they would actually go out and start to look for them. So the survivors kept warm by bonfire overnight. After the seven hour wait, the search began with a group of local volunteers heading off in the direction of a fire. But unfortunately, when the, the rescue party get there, they just see that it's just forestry out there burning slash. And so these guys That's now decided to go due east and head up to the mountain. The group searched for over 40 hours before returning home. They were unaware of the greater success of the aerial search. A search aircraft manages to fly over the mountain and actually spot the wreckage on the ground and the words dock. You see, and oh, the there it is. branches, yes, because we needed medical help send a doctor. Yeah. Wow. So what the RCAF did then was to bring in medical paratroopers and triage the co-pilot. The survivors might have been found, but they'd have to spend another night out in the cold. We had heard coyotes howling before, and around the bonfire, looking around, you could see these little beady eyes. They were getting closer now, waiting for us. Really? And that was something that unnerved us. The next day, a second group of volunteers set off with the aerial knowledge of the crash location. So, Ted, you were there on the day when the rescue team went in and That's correct. found them. And so the trailhead is just right up here? Where we started walking. Yes. Yeah. Ted led us to their starting point. These days, it's a logging road, but back then it was a goat trail covered in three feet of snow. You would take turns breaking trail for about 10 minutes. You could stand trying to wade through the snow but it was a very difficult and long walk. I think you should go in there, Bob, okay. and test it. And I'll see go, how... I'll be right after you. I'll follow you right down the trail. Towards the end of the fifth hour, they give a shout, is anybody there? And they heard a response back. They arrived in the night and it was totally exciting. We had no idea that they were coming and they were so comforting to us, you know, and reassuring. A doctor arrived with the rescue team, but the co-pilot's injuries were too severe and he passed away. Which only makes it more remarkable that everyone else was able to walk out. Do you think about it every time you get on a plane? No. You don't? No, you don't. don't even think about it? No. 
I had no fear of it somehow. <laughs>